Good morning, church. Good morning. Woo, it's 2022, and uh, we're back to this. So thank you so much for being in worship with us. Thank you for joining us online. Apologize for that. Uh, we had some problems, of course, with uh, all the ice and the snow. If you haven't seen our parking lot, it is still quite treacherous. And so uh, we were trying to dig some stuff out yesterday. And my understanding is that we tried to shovel or to plow it off, and it bent the blade. So uh, we'll be looking forward to this week to try to get that parking lot taken care of and be in worship next week with you. Uh, but we're so excited that you're here today and uh, excited that we get to try out. You got to see, uh, after trying to troubleshoot a bunch of stuff uh, this past year, hopefully you're going to have a great experience at home. I do want to mention to you that uh, our service today is going to be a mix of both live and pre-recorded elements. Uh, those, even the spots that are pre-recorded is going to be a lot of the music and things like that. You still have slides that are going to show up on your screen. And so if you want to worship with us uh, and just sing along and just do what you would normally do in a worship service, we encourage you to do that and to be with us this morning. I do also want to mention to you that if you happen to see a bulletin, uh, that there are going to be some adaptations to that here today. So just be aware of that and be ready for that as it uh, comes to us. As far as announcements, we do have a number of announcements to share with you here this morning. The first is we want to just remind everybody the visioning team has been rescheduled. Uh, but there was a conflict on the date that we originally chosen, um, and we're still looking for a new date on that, so we'll let you know that once it's determined. But until then, uh, just realize that that date is now uh, no longer the visioning team getting together. I do also want to mention to you that we do have a date set for the next ministry table, our first one of 2022. It's going to be March 5th, a Saturday at 9 a.m., as well as the leadership team will meet, of course, that Monday before on February the 28th at 7 p.m. If you do, uh, we also want to know there's a grief share group that's going to be starting up pretty soon. So, of course, if you know anybody that's lost a loved one that uh, would love for you to reach out and have an invite to this uh, program, it's a great program and does a lot of great ministry. It's uh, going to start up on February 17th at Thursday night. Those are at 7 p.m. here at the church, and so uh, you can just go ahead and let them know, as well as there's an online sign-up that they can do or even send an email or even call uh, in the bulletin. And you'll see uh, different elements there that you can call. I do want to mention to you that uh, Gummy was back tonight, but of course, with a lot being the way it is, we're going to have to cancel that as well. Uh, normally, we'd postpone a week, but next week is Super Bowl. You probably already have some plans, so what we're going to do, uh, the week after that was already a normal Gummy uh, session that was uh, going to be, so we're just going to kick it back to there. So tonight is canceled. We'll meet well, on February the 20th for a Gummy uh, that night here at the church, and so you can plan on that in your calendars. I do you also want to mention to you the Lillian Faith Circle uh, is going to be meeting this week. 10 a.m. the Fellowship Hall, and then uh, they're going to be doing some good old stuff afterwards with t-shirts and things and donations. Uh, so we want to make sure that you guys know all about that. You can find uh, information in that bulletin, as well as there's going to be a Valentine's Day lunch over at the Paddock Pub. So uh, you can uh, see the info in there in our announcements. I do want to mention to you also, uh, Safe Sanctuary training was scheduled for today after church. We're just going to kick that back to next week, so you guys can just stay after church next week, and uh, we'll make sure we get that training done this year. And of course, those that are, I know a lot of you are down in Florida or other places uh, that need to renew as well. We'll be, of course, setting a new date, uh, another date, a makeup date that is uh, coming up later in the spring, possibly early summer kind of time. Do you also, the last thing I want to mention to you is we do have a study in discipleship. I'm going to be leading this. Uh, this is basically just looking at how Jesus made disciples and then just sort of sitting and reflecting and having a class to just sit back and think about what it means for you and I to make disciples, our church to make disciples. Uh, and this is going to be the first class to start this. And uh, we'll be moving on from there to maybe some other things eventually. It's going to be a nine-week course. Uh, there are going to be breaks, of course, for a couple different Wednesdays that some special things are going on here at the church, such as Ash Wednesday and Holy Week. But uh, the biggest thing to know is if you want to be part of this, please contact me. And uh, that way I can make sure you have a book because you do need a book to be uh, uh, involved in the class. So do want to make sure that we got one of those for you. Well, those are our announcements this morning. Again, it's great to be in worship with you. As mentioned before, we're going to have a mix of elements, and so we're going to now quiet our hearts, still our minds, and let the Lord take over. So will you join with me in this prelude as we silence and look for God?
please join me this morning in the call to worship. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Please join me in the congregational prayer. God, our, our Father, Father, as sure as, as the sun rises or the waves crash on, on the shore, so too is your presence and love our constant companion. Your strength is given freely, your blessings to even the least. There is no one like you. We praise your name with all that is in us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, church, as we continue to worship, we're going to be entering into a time of prayer. Uh, for those online, that's everybody here this morning. We want to thank you for being in with us. Uh, a couple different ways you can participate in our, our prayer today is, first of all, if you have a prayer, we want to pray for that. Make sure it goes out to our prayer warriors. So you can send a prayer at prayer at groveportunc.org. That's the easiest way to do that. You can also go online if you go to our, our homepage, our website, and you go down to the Sunday morning tab. A drop-down menu pops down couple things you can do there, including registering your attendance here today. But the other thing you can do, of course, from that drop-down menu is uh, click on the prayer, and you can send a prayer request in that way as well, whichever way is for your convenience. Of course, you can always call the church office. Uh, we uh, have one just mentioned that uh, Melinda was homesick with COVID this last week. They got it again. Her family was dealing with that. We expect her to be in tomorrow. Uh, and so we do want to just mention that if you tried calling the office this last week, we apologize. Uh, I was in and out, she was gone, and it was just a little bit of a crazy week, of course, with the snow as well. I do want to mention to you that uh, we do have a list of prayer requests, and so in our bulletins there are a number of prayer requests, a couple different updates on those as well. First of all, we want to send uh, some praises out to the Lord. First of all, for the Hilbert's grandson in Louisiana, Jacob, uh, got engaged to his fiance, and so we want to just celebrate that here today. We also want to lift up, uh, Charlene Nutter mentioned that her friend uh, Jane has a granddaughter, Megan, and even though she was born with many different uh, disabilities, uh, they've chosen to go to be part of a Hollywood and model clothing for disabled children, and so what a great opportunity for them. We pray that just adds a blessing to their life, as well as just uh, makes a lot of people out there feel very good about uh, the world. And we do want to mention sympathies, of course, that are those who passed away. We want to mention uh, and continue to lift up Lisa Castricone and the passing of her brother that we mentioned last week, but we want to mention again here today. We, of course, also want to lift up prayers of the family of Jeanette Gossard, who was 95, who died from COVID. We want to lift up uh, also uh, the Christian sins, that is, because it was her great aunt, and so we lift them up uh, this time and as well. I do want to mention also prayer concerns that are, are listed. We uh, do have an update on Pug that Sanchez that came through, uh, who we've been praying for him for quite some time. Uh, Pug got a great doctor visit, a great consultation the other day. There's no tumors. Uh, no metastasis, it looks like, and so we celebrate that. Uh, we continue to pray for him and his recovery as well. Do you want to also pray for uh, those mentioned here that uh, were mentioned just the homeless, of course, with the winter storm we've been dealing with. We pray for their safety, for their well-being, and for people to be able to have a, a warm place to go, uh, hot food, as well as just uh, some caring hands. Do you want to lift up uh, different people as well that are listed? I'll just go ahead and mention them. Dorothy Keller is in the hospital. She's recovering. She's been at home for a little bit now. Uh, but uh, she wanted to continue to lift her up. We also want to continue to lift up Jake Spraulding, uh, who's been going through a hard time. We want to continue to lift him up and uh, continue to pray with a bunch of different prayer warriors from around different churches, praying for him as well. I do want to mention to you also uh, that we want to lift up Donna Smith, who uh, was able to come from the home of the hospital after a surgery. It's been a long journey for her. We want to continue to lift her up and the inflammation that she's still dealing with. And then one to add here today is we want to lift up Monty Dolger, uh, you know, many of you know Lonnie in our church. Lonnie had a, a fall in the, in the yesterday, not really according, as I understand, to the snow or anything, but just kind of a fall right coming into the house after bringing in some groceries. Uh, he, I understand he hurt his soul, shoulder area, and so we want to be lifting him up in these days as well. Do, as always, we want to continue to lift up those uh, that are in long-term care. So we lift up Jack, Carol, Annabelle, Charlotte, as well as those in active military service, Jake, Nicole, Matthew, Brandon, Justin, James, Bishop, and Parker. 
Uh, normally we have the opportunity to come to the altar. Uh, you, you may not be here in church today, uh, in this sanctuary per se. We know you're here in spirit. But wherever you are and wherever you're at, if you uh, do just feel like you're coming to the altar here today, just know that the Lord sees that. And so uh, whether you're at home sitting, whether you kneel down where you're at, uh, whatever it is that uh, you want to come meet with the Lord here today, you have that opportunity even though you are where you are uh, and the altar rails uh, aren't in front of you per se, but they're there as well. I do want to mention uh, lastly that uh, we just want to continue to pray for our world, pray for our church, pray for everything that's going on. Uh, of course, we do want to pray for many different things going on in the Olympics. We want to pray for world peace with different hostilities that are on the rise. So we continue to lift up those things as well. Let's not. Oh, sure. Okay. Sounds good. So we do have a, a new prayer request that just came through. So we'll mention that Barb Adams, who. Former member here, a long time. Many of you know her. Uh, it was a she has a blood infection. You said and suffered, had a stroke. Okay, uh, and so we want to lift her up today. Uh, my understanding is she's in the hospital, and so we lift up Barb as well in our prayers. Let's now go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Heavenly Lord, we thank you so much for this day. And even though we may be separated by physical distance in many different places, we know, Lord, that your spirit unites us. And Lord, it's as if we're all here in the same room. God, we've gone through many trials over these past few years as we've made many setbacks. And today we, we have the setback of snow of not being able to be together. And so, Lord, may your mighty work and your healing power be upon us all as we get ready for next week where we can be together again. Lord, until then, may you keep us all safe. May you keep us all full of your spirit, full of love, and full of hope in these days. Lord, first of all, as we come here today, we do recognize that we are your people, that we celebrate this story of Jesus Christ coming to the earth, dying on the cross, rising again, and the gift of the Holy Spirit that ignites our hearts even to this day and lives and dwells inside and among us. God, we love you and we praise you. For Lord, you are the Lord who has never let us go. You've held tight through thick and through thin. And even this day and this moment, you are our God, you are beside us, and you are for us. And so because of that, Lord, when we're out doing your will, we know that nothing can stand against your will. Nothing can stand against what you've called us to do. And so, Lord, whatever it is that we're in part of, whatever it is we find ourselves, whatever struggles we're going through, we claim that victory of Jesus Christ, that these light and momentary afflictions will one day be over, will open our eyes to the new world, and enter into your kingdom for good. Lord, as we hear today, we do recognize that until that day comes, there's many hurts, many sorrows, many things that happen in our life, and many troubles that we face. God, we take heart this morning that we remember that you came to this earth in flesh and blood. You lived as a human. And so you understand much of what we go through. You were tempted in every way. You experienced betrayal and hurt and pain and hunger and cold and suffering. And so, God, you are the Lord that when we pray to you, we know you hear and understand what we're going through. God, as we're here, we do lift up those who mourn this day, who miss the loss of a loved one. May your spirit upbuild them, upgird them, dwell among them, give them hope for this day. May the memory of their loved ones be fresh upon their hearts and bring to mind 
all those good memories that not only tears could happen, but laughter and joy as well as we recall those who have gone on before us. Lord, we do lift up those families as well as those that are suffering from any ailments or injuries or maybe hurts. We pray for those who have been given bad news by the doctor. We pray for those who are hurting. We pray for those who have maybe surgeries or things that are put on hold because of recent events. And Lord, we continue to pray for them. May you bring healing to each and every heart, each and every soul, and put our bodies back to good use at the work. Lord, as we're here today, we lift up many other things going on in the world. As we uh, focus so much on the Olympics that are happening right now, we pray, Lord, that they continue to be a sign of peace. And in a world, Lord, that seems to be gearing up for war once again in many different fronts and many different areas, where people are drawing battle lines, where troops are being deployed. Lord, we pray that these Olympics could settle our hearts once again and for every side to have the opportunity to choose peace and for our peace to rule in these days ahead of us. God, as we're here, we also lift up those that are in many different ailments and many different hurts, whether it be broken relationships, whether it be through battling addictions, whether it be just feeling lonely or isolated. Lord, maybe it's just the loss of something that Lord, the pandemic maybe took away or something else in life, and so they mourn this day. We pray for them. We especially pray for those who feel so lost and outside your will, Lord, that this very day they look to heaven to feel your presence enveloping them, and that the story of Jesus Christ could come and redeem them again as well. Lord, we pray all these things. We pray for our first responders. We pray for our military. We pray that you keep them safe. We pray for our leaders, not only of the world, not only of our governments, but we pray for those church leaders as well. Give us all wisdom. Give us the compassion and the heart, Lord, the strength of heart to do the right thing. We pray finally, Lord, for ourselves. God, we want to become more like you each and every day. Transform us as we surrender once again to you. Take our lives and, Lord, make a beautiful thing out of the broken pieces that we offer to you. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we pray that prayer that marks us as your disciples. And so we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There are many different ways you can give back uh, to the church. We talk about our offering at this time. Obviously, we're not in the building today, but you can uh, sign on the church's website uh, to access the Ezekiel Giving Program. You can also, um, there's an app you can download, and then you can also mail a check here to the church at 512 Main Street. And of course, next week when we're all back together, you can drop a check or an offering in the plate in the back of the church. Um, will you pray with me, please? Faithful Father, thank you that you give the gift of abundant life, eternal life. You have said that you are a good Father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Every, everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto you, our God, forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we will be blessed with some special music from Nancy Wilkerson, who is not in the building, but we have um, from uh, a piece from last fall that Brian is going to play for us now.
comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, gold 60 cubits high and 60, 60 cubits wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations of peoples of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you, go, you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold of, I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church, and welcome to our worship here today. Welcome to the sermon portion of today. We thank you so much for being in worship with us, and we're going to have a little bit of fun at the beginning of this service because uh, we're going to call this sermon today, Four Men and a Baby. And before we get into it, you just got to know, of course, uh, there was the famous movie, Three Men and a Baby, that was, uh, I believe, was, I don't remember, the 90s or 80s, I can't even remember at this point, but uh, it was a long time ago. All I know is that was long and uh, I, I never, I, I think I remember watching this once as a kid with the family or whatever, but I remember uh, when my wife and I were first married, you know, we had to go through all the movies that were precious to us when we were younger. And one of those that's precious to my wife is the movie Three Men and a Baby, and she loves it very much. Uh, we haven't watched it in a long time now, but uh, I had to, of course, watch that and remember that. And if you've never seen it, there's, of course, three bachelors in a city doing their big life, you know, living their bachelorhood, doing their thing and uh, parting it up all the time, doing all those things. And all of a sudden, a baby gets dropped off. And oh no, they got to take care of it. So then the, there's a whole rigmarole where they have to take care of the baby. And of course, by the end, uh, they end up keeping her, becoming you know, parents, if you will, raising this baby together, even though they're all three bachelors. And, uh, and it's a good, warm-hearted movie. Of course, you got to throw in some other elements like mafia people and money and all sorts of fun things in there too. But a good time, nonetheless, uh, through that. Today's story is really about three men and a big baby called King Nebuchadnezzar 
And of course, as we learn, there's actually even one more person that enters into the story. But first, let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as we look at that story that was read today, I remember what happened, right? Because King Nebuchadnezzar is doing his thing, and he's uh, the big king of the day, doing whatever he wants. He decides, I want to set up a big, large, the Bible says, image. And what we think that's going on right there is when we say image, not just of image of one of the gods, but an image of himself, <laughs> right? And if you do the math, it ends up being about 90 feet tall, about nine feet wide, if you will. And he basically says, hey, I'm going to get the band together, and when the band plays, everybody's got to bow down to worship, and if you don't, I'm going to throw you into a big furnace of fire. Sounds pretty good, right? Of course, what happens is some of the Jews have a big issue with this. They've been captured. They're enslaved, sort of, if you will. They're in exile, and so they're part of the kingdom. They've risen up in some of the ranks, and there's three of them specifically, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hear these words but refuse to do that. And so they refuse to bow down, and of course, like any good tattletale, there's some other officials that come up and say, hey, these three dudes, they're in trouble. And they say, they, of course, give their names over to Nebuchadnezzar. He gets all mad, calls them forth, and asks them to explain themselves, and basically gives them an out and says, if you bow down and worship now, you're going to be fine. If you don't, I'm going to kill you and throw you into this furnace. And so, of course, they give them that answer. That's so great in the, in the scripture, that answer of saying, Nebuchadnezzar, our God is powerful than you. <laughs> He can save us if he wants to. But you know what? Even if he doesn't, we serve him. And basically, we'd rather die serving him than bow down and worship your idol. A 90-foot idol, 9-foot wide, made in the image of Nebuchadnezzar, probably made of wood covered in gold, but a gold statue, 90-foot high, 9-foot wide. And of course, the rest of the story is a great story, right? It ends up, Nebuchadnezzar gets furious. If you keep reading, he tells him to stoke the fire. So they make it super, super hot, way hotter than it ever is. It says seven times hotter than it should be. And of course, uh, he gets the soldiers. The soldiers bind up the three men, and they throw the three men in the fire. And it was so hot that the three soldiers, or the soldiers that threw them, that is, end up passing away themselves. They die from just the flames. And yet, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are there. And we hear this point of view from Nebuchadnezzar, where Nebuchadnezzar jumps up and says, what in the world is going on? And I'll read it to you right here in the scripture himself, itself. And so it says this, that when Nebuchadnezzar looked out, it says, then Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisor, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. And he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And that fourth looks like the son of the gods. And so Nebuchadnezzar approached the opening of the burning furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants, get this, of the most high God. Come out. Come here. So they did. And so the Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego come out of the fire and all the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the royal advisors, and everybody else that was there crowded around them, including those little tattletales, I'm sure, as well. And they saw the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor the hair on their heads were singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to rescue his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command. They were willing to give up their lives rather than worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is going to be cut to pieces, and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for there is no, for there is no other God who can save this way. And oh, by the end of it, the three men get a promotion as well. And of course, we love this story because there's so many elements that are great about it, so many wonderful elements of, you know, kings being silly and being just, you know, full of themselves, to the three men who stand by their principles that worship God, to God moving in a mighty way, and even showing up in a fourth person in the middle of the fire, and of course the king's heart being changed, and the three men being rewarded at the end of it. But of course as I think about this story, I always think about that first part, and God works miracles, but today I really want to talk about that first part that we read in scripture of Nebuchadnezzar, the king baby, if you will, 
of this story, sending three men into the fire because they wouldn't bow down and worship his image. This story, maybe more so than almost any other story in the Bible, really tries to get at my hearts and teach me what it means for an idol to be in our life, and what it means for an idol to be clamoring for our attention. And not only clamoring for our attention, but demanding our attention. Oh, and by the way, punishing us if we don't only give it our attention, but even give us, give it our worship. Now we have conversations about idols all the time because, of course, idols are always popping up in our lives. We always have to work diligently to knock down every idol that firstly comes up in our life. And I don't know what you deal with or what I deal with or what everybody else deals with. We're not going to name them all per se here today. But nonetheless, you know it. If you've tried to follow Christ for any length of time, you know that just somehow our hearts are tuned to just be further fun, wander away from God sometimes, and we constantly try to erect these idols in our life that sometimes God has to come in and just knock them down. But there are idols that just really aren't just personal things that you and I deal with and just things, you know, that come along our life. Sometimes those idols really become publicly accepted and publicly accepted to the point where our whole world, even culture, just bows down and worships it and turns around and says... You need to worship it, too. If I was going to name those off today, I would, I would give the big three. The love of money, the love of power, the love of sex. And I would even add in modern times, kind of right now, at least at the point of history we're at in America, is the love of extremes. Meaning kind of the idea that we can't find that middle ground sometimes, that there's got to be all this, all that, and it's just my way, the highway, and we're going to battle that out and duke it out. I almost imagine like when you watch the National Geographic channel and there's those two male, you know, animals and there's button heads and going at it right until one is either killed or runs off hurt and maimed. I just feel like sometimes it's that as well. Now, at all of those, I wanted to, to tackle what I think is probably the hardest one here today and to jump in and just reflect upon it a little bit. Because, there, again, there are idols that you and I have, but there are idols that our world looks at and says, bow down and worship this. And if you're not, shame on you. And punishment is coming your way. And the one I wanted to talk about is really today is that idea of love of sex. And admittedly, I admit that probably out of, the, out of all of these, these are the hardest one that's talked to me because you know what? It's, it's admittedly a very hard subject to preach on nowadays. It's a touchy subject to say the least. But nonetheless, we want to preach on it every now and then because it is worthy of talking about the idol that stands in our culture that keeps asking us to bow down and worship it. In fact, if you just think about any subject that's so taboo that your pastor wants to avoid it or that people are so divided on, that almost in itself suggests that it's probably got something to do with an idol itself. I just wanted to give you kind of a little kind of just personal story of this. You see, when I think of Scripture, it was amazing to me when I came to Scripture to learn, you know, of course, that sex itself was a beautiful thing. It was created by God. It was supposed to be this wonderful gift to humanity. And yet, of course, like you probably were when I was growing up, but at least I know for a fact when I was growing up in the way world that I was growing up in, and whether I lived in Georgia at the time or when I was in high school in, in Dallas or Houston or anywhere in between that I lived, these things became true about sex. And before as an adult, I had learned them and understood them, right? And the world around me had preached them to me. And the first was this, is that sex was separated from love. And this idea that it was just an action separated from love, that it was about gratification, versus really that, that holy union between two people filled with love and expression of that love. You see, sex became cheap, became everywhere. And everywhere you look, it was just another thing, another action to happen. I remember also that, you know, the idea of waiting for sex marriage was considered stupid. You were a prude if you believed in this or even tried to live in it, or worse yet, you were a total loser, right? And no one, uh, you were not only unpopular, but no one even cared to talk to you, right? And, I, and maybe you didn't have that experience, but that was my experience growing up. And so I remember a lot of us that were Christians trying to follow Jesus, and we said, hey, you know what? We're not going to just give in to this. We actually, in some ways, were almost outside of the normal high school groups that would run around. And in fact, whenever that subject would come up, people would just sort of shake their heads at us and be like, what is with y'all? <laughs> What's with you? What's the big deal? And yet, we understood it in a different way. 
I remember when, in uh, college I got together with a friend, we were talking about this uh, very thing, and we were discussing like the different, you know, like as you grew up, you go through sex education classes, right, and do all those different things, and uh, they were describing to me, like when I went through, at least they, they talked about abstinence as one idea that you could partake in, right? And what I remember so vividly was my friend just looked at me, and, and it was a, she was a she, and she looked at me, and she, she was just like, wait, they taught that? I was like, well, yeah, I mean, it was part of it. And they were like, we weren't even given that option. <laughs> like, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even something they talked about. Like, it was just understood that you're now of age, and you're gonna, just going to go do it, and so here's some basic things you need to know about it. And then, of course, in college, you encounter the different philosophers and the different ways people see the world, especially when they look at just only what is matter and not what is spiritual. And they would basically just say, hey, all of us humans, we're just animals. It's just natural behavior. And so it is what it is. I even look at recent pop culture, just when I say recent, the 2000s, right? So it's been a little bit. <laughs> I forget that's 20 years ago at this point. But, you know, you look at uh, the 2020s, the beginning of, or not 2020, the beginning of the 2000s, you know, there's a, a popular movie that was called 40-Year-Old Virgin, which made fun of the idea of that someone who's 40-year-old that had never had sex had to have something wrong with them, right? There had to be something off with them. It couldn't be a man who was doing his best to live according to God's will and, of course, go through life and try to serve and try to only encounter sex in a way that was beautiful and loving. Or you think about uh, more recent days, Miley Cyrus, who, of course, was a famous Disney uh, actor, and she, uh, of course, had a, a kind of a nudity kind of thing going on with one of her, her albums, and it was specifically she was on a big wrecking ball, and that was this big song, a wrecking ball and all that stuff. And I remember there was an interview with her, and specifically the interviewer uh, wanted to talk to her about why in the world are you doing this image now? And, and you know, your Disney image is going away, and you're, you're getting on this very kind of sexualized theme. And Miley Cyrus said, well, you know, I can't stay a kid forever. And basically, the idea was that, you know, as a kid, that's great, but when you become an adult, you have to be sexual in that sense and act out in your sexual ways. And of course, you and I know, as you drive across any interstate, the amount of adult video shops, and you think about just NBC in 2015, so this is even outdated, they were doing an article on the porn industry and basically $97 billion globally. And just let that think there, $97 billion with a B. And that's not even to mention even worse things like human trafficking and all that's wrapped up in there. I remember as a youth pastor even, I remember the big thing back then was my youth were dealing with the pressure of texting and in texting, there was this big pressure in those days, and I don't know if we've kind of nubbed it or if it's still around, but the idea was is that you had to send to your friends pictures of yourself naked, and I had to walk through some of my youth being struggled and peer pressured with that very thing, and how they were outcast and out, uh, you know, basically left beyond their friend groups if they wouldn't do it. Or they were pressured to put on their picture to hot or not, or not websites where people go on and just rate you hot or not, and you get to see whether or not you're good looking or not and have sexual power, quote unquote, or not. I mean, in all these things, you can see sex as an idol. And even in other ways as well. If you just think about the change in thinking that we've had in even recent times, in the Bible's era and even throughout most of human history, sex was just seen as an action, if you will, that took place. And whether or not it was in love or not, it was an action. But if you think about how, how you have sex or who you have sex with became then a preference, and now how you have sex or who you have sex with is now your identity, and even now how you have sex or who you have sex with, it's not only your identity, but other people have to celebrate it in you, whether or not they agree with you or not. And the number of categories that we've created so that you can identify and proclaim your sexuality, and oh, you can even do it with a bunch of different flags that are unique to each and every type. I think it's pretty clear in all this that sex can become an idol, and for sure it is in our world, especially in America. And the drum is beating, just like the music that day that sang, bow down, worship me. And if you're not, what a loser. And if you're not, well, we're not going to be your friend anymore. And if you're not, well, we're not doing business with you anymore. 
can't remember if I ever shared this, and I should have asked my dad permission beforehand, but I didn't, so sorry, Dad, if you're watching this, but I remember the moments uh, of my dad. My dad was a businessman his whole life, and somewhere around the age of, you know, 12 or something like that, I remember asking my dad, I said, hey, Dad, and, and this was in front of Mom, and, and so it was just Mom, Dad, and I, and, and I said, Dad, have you ever been to, like, one of these strip clubs or anything like that? I remember he got really, you know, my dad was a, normally a pretty outgoing person and got really kind of quiet there for a moment and he said, well, I have to say I have. And he said, you know, it was basically to do business. To even make a business deal happen and a sales happen, he had to help entertain his clients in such ways. See, sex can be a huge idol in our culture. In fact, it's such an idol. I remember distinctly, I prayed for one of my sisters in the faith. And the, I listen to you listen a lot of, I do a lot of traveling and stuff in, in the sense of going around and visiting hospitals that were like an hour away in one of my churches. So I had a lot of time to listen to radio and I would listen to uh, all sorts of things, but NPR was one of them, National Public Radio. And I remember they were doing kind of a piece on the idea of religion and sexuality, how they go together. They were very interested in that in this segment. And they were interviewing, and they were interviewing um, someone who would identify both as a Christian and as a lesbian. And what I remember so vividly about this interview is they were kind of curious. They were trying to get to that idea of holding both together and how do you do that. And what was so intriguing about the specific interview was this, is that she could go on and on about her sexuality. And so when they asked her about that, it was just, you know, loud and proud, tell everything about it, nothing hidden under the sun, and proclaim it, and rejoice in it, and celebrate it, and all these different things. And whenever they would move to questions of her faith, and specifically, since he, she identified as a Christian, specifically her faith, her only answer that she would continue to say over and over again, she'd say, that's a private thing. And the interviewer kept kind of pressing, of course, well, you know, like, and she would just go, well, faith and religion, that's a private thing. That's something you don't talk about and that's only private, and it's personalized, and so I'm not going to share it with you. And I remember thinking about my sister who follows Christ that day. We just have to think about that idea that when it came to anything to do with sex, talk about it, proclaim it. When it came to about Jesus Christ, she couldn't even proclaim Jesus as Lord in a public way. I often pray for her, and of course, I don't remember her name. It's been so long, and I don't think I ever knew, maybe I even knew her for her real name from the interview, but I pray for her. Because in so many ways, it seems like sex had become more important than Jesus. And that's what every idol wants to do, especially those that are public. It wants to knock off the Lord God from this pedestal of our hearts. And even if it wants to sit beside that God, it doesn't do so for long. It always tries to push off. You know, for any of the young people that are here today, however you're going through life and whatever you're finding identity in, whether it's you know, through sex or whatever, all those different things, ultimately, there's only one place that can be the center of who you are, and that is to find your center in Jesus Christ and his love for us and the proclamation that through his work, you're a child of God. If you put your identity, your main identity, that is, in anywhere else, it's going to let you down. And it's not to say that you're not the other people or the other things of your life are important, but if that's not primary, you're going to end up getting hurt. And in so many ways, the drum is beating. You know, maybe you're here today, and as you just hear this, you know for a fact that there are parts of your life that you worship, especially around sex. The numbers are staggering, of course. Maybe you deal with pornography. Maybe you deal with cheating on your spouse. Maybe you are not married, but yet you search for acceptance in so many ways, and so you give yourself out in so many ways. Whoever you are, know this. The Lord loves you. The Lord came to earth find you. The Lord came to earth so that that idol of your life could be knocked down and that he could reign supreme in your life. So that not only he could be glorified, but that you could be loved, you could know whose you are, and that you could be a forever a child of God.
Let us pray. Lord, as we're here today, we thank you so much for your love. And Lord, this is a hard subject, as we know, to talk about. For many people, it's a private thing, a very personal thing. For many people, it's a very just dear and dear to our hearts. And yet, Lord, anything that we put in front of you, ultimately, Lord, will cause us harm. And so, God, as we're here today, however we deal with sex, however we understand that, help us to continually find ways and discover your truth so, Lord, we can continue to draw closer to you. And help us, Lord, to never be a people that would love sex and proclaim it and go out and live in it, but hide you in a box in a closet of our life. Help us instead to always proclaim you first. Let this world know of Jesus Christ, how he's changed us. And Lord, always lead us away from temptation. We pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, Brian cut me off real quick. But one final thing I want to mention here today is that today was a day we're supposed to take communion. And of course, we're not going to be taking that here today, but I just wanted to reflect on it a minute while we're together. That the Lord loved us so much that his body was broken, that his blood was poured out. When we celebrate communion next Sunday together, I know it's going to be a blessed time, but until then, I want you to remember God's love poured out for us, for you, for me, for many for the forgiveness of sins, to all who would cling to him and proclaim him Lord. We'll see you next week.
Thank you for being in worship with us once again as we go. Let's hear this benediction. The words that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship your image of gold that you have set up. May all the idols of our life, those that are not only personal, but those that our world proclaims and demands that we worship, may we stand strong against them to serve the Lord with all our heart, that he will protect us and guide us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.